Good morning and welcome to the Kilik & Co Market Update. I know we've talked about negative yielding bonds a lot recently, but most of the ones we've looked at so far have been bonds that did initially have a positive return, but investors have piled into those bonds and pushed up the prices to the extent that anyone buying the bonds at those higher prices would end up with a negative return. However, this week for the first time, the German government has issued government bonds with a negative yield at the very outset. So that means that investors are lending the government money, and yet the investors are the ones paying for the privilege of doing that. So these are 30-year bonds, and that means that investors are giving the government their money for 30 years, they're accepting they will not get any interest whatsoever for 30 years, and what's more, they're accepting that at the end of those 30 years, they will get back less than the sum that they put in. So this really is the first time that something like this has ever happened before in terms of government bonds. Now, also recently, we've talked about the possibility of governments around the world raising their own expenditure in order to boost economic growth. And if it's true that governments can borrow money without paying any interest whatsoever, that actually makes the possibility of more government spending more feasible. So I think the amount of fiscal expenditure and government expenditure happening around the world is definitely worth keeping an eye on as these bond yields get even lower. And also this week, we've been looking at Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund. Now, this is a fund that was set up in 1990 as a way of investing some of the excess profits from Norway's oil reserves. It's currently the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world, and it's worth over $1 trillion. And because it's so large, we do think it's quite interesting to have a look at how the fund is being managed. And just to put into context how large it is, the fund currently owns over 1% of all the stocks and shares globally on the stock exchange, so it really is an enormous fund. And we were quite interested this week to see that the fund has recently increased its exposure to equities and reduced its exposure to bonds. So have a look at this pie chart here. You can see that the current exposure to equities is just below 70%. And we think it's quite clear that the fund managers have taken the view that at the moment, with all these negative bond yields around, equities do look relatively, relatively attractive in comparison to the bonds that are currently on the market. So we just found that, that comment quite interesting. And if you would like to hear more about Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund, you can have a look on their website and there you can find a full report and also a full list of the holdings within the fund. And finally this week, water has been one of our key investment themes for quite some time now. And we're always keen to see any new data on the subject of water cleanliness or water supply all around the world. So we were quite interested, interested this week when the UK's Environment Agency published some new statistics about the cleanliness of rivers around the UK. So if you have a look, look at this chart here, the yellow bars show the percentage of rivers in different regions that met the Environment Agency's cleanliness standards back in 2016. But what we're looking at this week is the turquoise bars. So those show the percentage of rivers that are expected to meet those targets by the year 2027. And what you can see here is that for a number of regions, particularly around the London area, a lot of those rivers will still fail to meet those standards by the year 2027. So I think this really shows that more does need to be done to combat this polluted water all around the UK. And therefore, we do think there is quite a significant opportunity for any companies involved in the cleaning of water. Now, moving on to the week ahead, uh, in terms of companies reporting, it really is quite a quiet week. And to be honest, there aren't any company results that we're looking ahead to next week. But looking at the macro picture, we have got Jackson Hole happening at the moment. So we are expecting some comments from the Federal Reserve. We've also got the G7 summit happening this weekend. And we're also looking closely at the negotiations between Boris Johnson and the EU as he tries to renegotiate Theresa May's Brexit deal. That's it from us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.